Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editorial Director of Semiconductor Manufacturing and Design. I'm here with Steve Longoria, Senior Vice President at Soytech. Steve, we've heard a lot about yield issues, particularly at advanced nodes. What's happening there? What will SOI do to that? And, and probably a difference between uh, fully depleted and partially depleted SOI as well. In today's uh, world, we're seeing a lot of new news on people trying to ramp up 28 nanometer technologies. I mean, just as recent as the last two weeks, we saw both Qualcomm and Altera come out with concerns on capacity with TSMC. That, in our view, part of that capacity challenge is related to them hitting the parametric yields because of leakage. Bulk CMOS at 28 nanometers has leakage path within the transistor that is becoming uncontrollable. We're starting to see that really prop up at 28. It's going to get worse at 20. We believe that the movement to fully depleted SOI in a planar transistor addresses those challenges by enabling the gate to be controlled in an undoped fashion and literally enable the designer to now shut off the gate again and address those leakage challenges. And we expect to see a significant jump in yields versus parametric yields in bulk CMOS versus fully depleted SOI in planar devices. Starting at 28 nanometer, we think that'll be apparent with ST and STE's products, but we think the rest of the industry will benefit from that as they embrace fully depleted planar transistors. Is cost of SOI still an issue, or has that evaporated as we start getting more into uh, basically dispersing the cost around the rest of the manufacturing and supply chain? So in our industry today, costs are becoming a huge challenge. And being able to deliver value in a consumer economics world is driving more and more and more performance and higher user experience and lower costs continually is representing a huge challenge. That plays through into how do we manufacture these devices as we get smaller and smaller. The blending of the line between what has been a wafer material going into a foundry and what has been the front end of processing within a foundry is blurring. We are now in Soytech integrating several front end of the front end process structures within the transistor at a wafer level. For example, with our thin buried oxide, we actually have implemented the, the uh, isolation layer underneath your gate, and our top silicon in our FD2D offering has become the channel within your transistor. So we have moved significant complex process steps out of the foundry and into our wafer level product, and that has had two effects. One is we're doing a lot of that complex processing at a wafer level, much cheaper tooling, lower cost manufacturing environment. Also, we have eliminated several process steps. Our wafer does bring more value, it does have more cost and in going into the factory, but that is more than offset by the simplification of the process that we enable with our FD2D offering. The net result is a lower cost, higher performance SOC for the, the end consumer. If I go one step further to the next generation of technology with FinFETs, Little difference in the top silicon thickness and the buried oxide, but even more dramatic effect on the simplification for manufacturing. We actually, because of our top silicon thickness control and our buried oxide, can fix the height of the fin going into the factory and have an ideal isolation layer under the fin, reducing tremendous process steps, again, resulting in simpler manufacturing, lower risk, higher yields, and a better SOC as a result. One of the great advantages of SOI has always been lower leakage. What happens when we start getting into a stack configuration and stacking of dye is probably going to become pretty mainstream as we start getting over the next couple of years? What we can do, and we're looking at that problem, is um, in, by moving to fully depleted, we enable the industry to control that leakage. That's a challenge that we are looking at in the future of with our layering technology. How can we help with uh, stack dyes and reducing leakage with the material sets that we can bring into the factories? Part of what we're doing is our complete layer to layer transferring for stacking silicon. And I think there's a lot more opportunity in that exact area of, of 3D packaging and controlling leakage. One of the issues in design has always been how do we control the uh, thermal dissipation as we start getting into uh, the stacking of dye? If you start, start changing the substrate material, you affect that in a different way. How effective will that be going forward, and will you still need the same level of uh, diligence from the design side? 
I think as we continue to push technology, you're going to need that diligence at a design site because we're going to continue to move the bar forward. We're going to do what we can do as a uh, materials provider, a wafer provider of the industry to anticipate those challenges going out in the future and, and put the right material sets into the foundry, the right pre-integration of basic uh, transistor functionality. But there will continue to be that design challenge because our world wants more out of our industry and we need to collectively work as a team to figure out how to address those challenges. In the past when designs went haywire, it was typically given off to the, the manufacturing and the manufacturing fixed a lot of those problems. Can they still do that or is it now going to be much closer cooperation between the two of them? Yeah, I think it's a great question and, and it goes back to the blending of this boundary condition between uh, what Soytech does in the front end manufacturing uh, with foundries. It's very interesting as we have looked at stack die, just performance, dealing with uh, leakage and power consumption. You're seeing the industry's boundaries that were fairly well defined in a disaggregated fabless foundry, um, IP house, uh, packaging environment, uh, working very well for many generations. Because of the speed of technology, because of the leakage management, because of the, uh, the density in which we're packing technology, I'm seeing a, a movement toward reintegration. Now that's not reintegration across company boundaries, but that's reintegration across partnerships and collaboration. So I think to deal with the problems you're highlighting, we're going to have to get closer together and you're going to see stronger alliances across the industry as a result from the material set to the IP provider to the foundry to the, uh, the SOC and even the end customer. It's very interesting, even today, um, I'm getting calls from system providers in the handset and the tablet space asking a wafer provider about innovation and technology and what they need to be thinking about in the future all the way through the stack. So I think you're going to see more of that collaboration across boundaries that previously weren't even bridged. Steve Longoria, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ed.